Hi, I'm Aki Fujimura. I'm CEO of D2S. My co-authors today are Johan Choi and Abhishek Sandra, uh, both of whom are on D2S. I'll talk about uh, curvilinear masks, and it's a really interesting topic, particularly for us. Uh, what D2S does is GPU acceleration for the semiconductor manufacturing industry. So anything that uh, benefits from GPU acceleration, like image processing or simulation-based processing, anything simulation of nature is good on the GPU. And, and also deep learning are uh, very good applications. And uh, these are the things that we focus on and uh, ex um, explicitly to help. Uh, semiconductor manufacturing, uh, either on the mask side or on the wafer side. And so, uh, because that's what we do, and curvilinear is something that uh, we had in mind for a long time, and uh, we've been uh, 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 doing advanced work on curvilinear for over 12 years. And uh, so, it's great to see that uh, uh, it's uh, finally really happening. Um, but uh, from the general industry's point of view, and I can see that the reaction uh, that some people might have is, oh my gosh, we, you know, we already have so much to do. Uh, it's, uh, uh, you know, I have too much work already. Uh, we're going to change it again and uh, introduce a new thing like curvilinear masks. And, you know, so um, I can see the reaction, but um, I think there are two answers to this. Um, one is that uh, we serve uh, in the mass community, we serve the wafer community, and uh, wafer quality is known to be better uh, with curved linear masks. So that's one reason. And the other reason is uh, because uh, I think actually uh, mask making um, uh, tasks are made easier with curved linear masks um, rather than trying to uh, target shapes that we know are not manufacturable, 90 degree corners are not manufacturable, they all get corner rounded. Um, and figuring out a way to deal with that or, you know, ignore them explicitly while not ignoring the real errors and so on. And uh, I think there are many elements of uh, using curved linear masks that are actually easier than uh, trying to deal with uh, Manhattan shapes. So, um, so I think there are predominantly those two reasons are reasons why bother with curved linear masks. So the first one on uh, why uh, is it better for the wafer? Uh, it's been documented for a long time, uh, but uh, uh, this is uh, a recent uh, result uh, that Ezekiel Russell talked about at an EV initiative event uh, from Micron, uh, talking about uh, comparison of uh, a standard OPC uh, versus curvilinear ILT on the bottom, um, which uh, produced a 85% increase in depth of focus. And there are many other studies like this too. I think it's uni universally understood that for wafer quality, uh, resilience to manufacturing variation on the wafer, um, curvilinear shapes on the mask are better. And that's reflected in a luminary survey that uh, we did uh, uh, with the uh, eBeam initiative. Uh, this uh, particular slide is from 2020, but 2021 luminary survey results, uh, which just got published uh, in uh, during the Vacas conference, uh, is uh, uh, also showing similar trends. And this 85% is different from the 85% I was talking about before. And this is saying that uh, even on EUV, which presumably is more precise, right? So, so has uh, less need for curvilinear shapes, you would think. But even uh, uh, on EUV masks, 85% uh, of the luminaries say that at least some of the leading edge masks uh, in high volume manufacturing by 2023 are going to have curvilinear content. And definitely on 193i, uh, the luminaries believe that, uh, you know, only 6% think that uh, only Manhattan shapes, um, which Manhattan in this context uh, includes 45 degree shapes. So um, uh, an overwhelming majority of the luminaries believe that at least some of the shapes on some of the leading edge high volume manufacturing masks will be curvilinear. And uh, including 12% of the luminaries who think that some of the HVM masks for 193i are going to be predominantly curvilinear.
right? The entire reticle has curvilinear shapes as opposed to just hot spots, let's say. Um, and even in the EUV scenario, uh, it only uh, decreases to 6%. So um, there's a, a high amount of belief that uh, even with EUV, a more precise instrument, uh, curvilinear shapes are desirable. And um, Ezekiel Russell, in the panel session that we had uh, during the SPIE Advanced Lithography Conference, uh, talked about that. So here is a video of him talking about that. UV and, and try to extend the lifetime of those tools deployed to manufacturing before having to convert to the next generation high NA UV tools, you will want to use your full arsenal of tricks, of, of OPC tricks that, that you've developed for immersion lithography, also in EUV, because it makes sense to extend the use of, of the 0.33 NA tools uh, for as many generations as you can. So no question that the OPC groups across the world are gonna be using and looking at curvilinear features as a way to extend the lifetime of those tools that are gonna be deployed in manufacturing. That's number one. Number two, uh, not only EUV um, requires all the, the image contrast possible, like that being explained, in order to minimize LER due to uh, shot noise, but in addition, what we find is that uh, for small features that EUV will be patterning, uh, especially when you have two-dimensional features, it does help the mask local city uniformity as well to have curvilinear shapes uh, because the, the way the mask is processed, it helps with the overall consistency of those features uh, by not having to resolve uh, sharp corners that will have more variation and thus contributing to local CDU on the wafer as well. So I see that there's multiple benefits. Uh, in my mind, there's no question that it'll be adopted. Uh, timeline, I'm not so sure, and to what extent will depend on the application. Uh, logic companies or foundries may have a different need than, for example, a memory company, just based on the patterning uh, that we're doing. But uh, no question that parts of the mask will see curvilinear shapes for UV as well. Um, what Ezekiel said uh, second uh, is really important too, and um, that's referring to the mask manufacturing being easier or more precise if you target a manufacturable shape. Um, 90 degree corner is not manufacturable. And uh, if you ask for it to be manufactured, it'll do the best it can, but uh, it will have more, va more variation and more manufacturable, uh, manufacturable targets are more resiliently manufacturable, resilient uh, to manufacturing variation on the mask. And that, of course, translates to uh, variation on the wafer as well. So I, I think that's also an important point there. And uh, shifting to another uh, topic uh, that we uh, asked about in the 2021 luminary survey, and this is talking about multi-beam machines. And of course, multi-beam machines enable curvilinear masks, so at least uh, uh, you know one part of the enabler, a uh, very key one. And uh, it's because variable shape beam or VSB machines that's uh, traditionally been used for decades and uh, have a, a characteristic that the right time of VSB machines are proportional to the number of shots. Um, and number of shots are basically proportional to the constituent rectangles or 45 degree triangles that uh, you fracture the incoming shapes into. So shape complexity results in longer write times. Multi-beam machines are processing in pixels, constant size pixels. So because of that, there is no change in the right time, regardless of the complexity of the incoming shapes. So that's a huge key difference there. And because that's a, a well-known, well-understood effect, um, you would think that um, uh, one of the reasons why multi-beam mask riders are selected is for curvilinear, but it's true. But um, the number one and number two reason uh, why multi-beam riders are uh, being bought, according to the luminaries, is because of EUV. 
more precision, more throughput, and right that these are reasons why uh, uh, EUV masks are the reasons why multi-beam riders are being adopted. And then number three and number four are the curved linear uh, IoT shapes, either on the EUV or 193i. And what's interesting in the progression from the 2020 survey to the 2021 survey that you're looking at here is that in 2020, 2020, a year ago, the number four answer was number three. So um, EUV and 193 were flipped back then. And that kind of made sense, right? Because um, uh, if you want to do uh, 193i with curved linear because 193i needs it more, um, then, uh, you know, that would be uh, more of a reason than trying to do curved linear IoT for EUV. But and uh, what's shifting in the opinion is now um, maybe the thought is that EV masks need multi-beam anyway for other reasons. And given that you have them, uh, you have multi-beam riders to write the EV masks, it makes sense to extend the way for quality by using curved linear IoT and produce curved linear shapes on EUV, right? So, um, and then uh, 193i needs it even more, but um, maybe the multi-beam mask riders are busy <laughs> doing all the EUV masks, so EUV takes priority. Maybe that's the reason. That's just my speculation. Now, um, another potential reason is that uh, VSP machines can do 193i curvy mask shapes. And this is a uh, previously announced uh, discussion called a uh, mask wafer co-optimization or MWCO. Uh, the reference is on the lower right, lower left there. Um, using overlapping shots with VSB writing, 193i uh, masks uh, can produce a roughly uh, equal number of shots on the mask to produce OPC shapes as well as these MWCO shots. And you can see the MWCO shots on the way right. And the difference between just regular overlapping shots, which um, had been possible for quite a while, and, and this MWCO idea is that not only is the shot list generated with overlapping shots, like you can see here, which would have substantially smaller shot count than not using overlapping shots. It also further optimizes the ILT portion by saying, okay, now I'm going to use these list of shots and not increase the shot count, but I'm going to move the shots a little bit, you know, move the left edge a little bit or move the shot location a little bit or whatever. I'm going to adjust the sh existing shots and do double simulation, mask simulation, followed by wafer simulation and evaluate what happened on the wafer. And then uh, you iterate through that process by adjusting the shots to create a higher quality wafer in either the nominal shape or uh, uh, in uh, the wafer uh, process window. So um, being able to do this allows a low shot count, a shot count that's not too far from uh, OPC shot count, to produce curvilinear shapes that are optimized for wafer quality. Now, we can do this for 193i, but not really for EUV because EUV has so many more shots um, that the shot count becomes uh, untenable for VSP machine. And also uh, because VSP uh, uh, machines uh, being very accurate, um, but because of the nature of VSP-based methodology like this, um, the approximation that a overlapping shot can make of the curvilinear shape is um, more 
uh, uh, more reflected in a EUV mask. So uh, 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 in order to be as accurate as possible, faithful to the original curvilinear intent, uh, you would have to have even smaller shots uh, with EUV. And uh, that uh, additionally uh, makes it uh, a too much shot count uh, for, uh, for this method to be um, useful, practical uh, for EUV masks. Um, EV masks are written for, uh, by motor beam machines anyway, for other reasons. So, uh, it probably doesn't matter. What's important here is that for 193i masks, curved linear mask targets can be written using VSP machines. So now, um, Moving on to the general multi beam based on uh, uh, curved linear masks, and uh, curved linear masks are enabled by the multi beam mask rider, curved linear IoT that produces the target mask shapes in curved linear shapes, and GPU acceleration. Now, what's notable about all of these technologies is that they are all pixel based computations. They are not geometric edge-based computations that are subject to increase in file size and increase in computational time, much more significantly increase in computational time by increasing the number of edges or number of vertices that describe the shape. In pixel-based computing, just like on your screen that you're looking at this presentation in, um, which is pixel based, right? Um, this plus sign or this equal sign takes no more time to write or to show or to compute, to do any kind of a manipulation in than the curved linear shape that you see here, the characters, or even this kind of a picture. It takes no additional time. Um, to be able to process curved linear shapes as well as any rectilinear or Manhattan shapes in pixel manipulation. And pixel-based manipulation in computing terms is a mathematical dual, meaning that you can do anything that you can do in one, you can do in the other. Anything you can do in pixel space, you can do in uh, 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 edge-based uh, geometry a contour-based manipulation, and vice versa. Um, but runtimes are totally different. And also, it's subject to limitation on the resolution that you desire. Pixel-based only works if you have sufficient small size of sufficiently small size of pixel to be able to capture the resolution that you want. But in mask writing, we know what the pixel size is. You can't print any better than the pixel size used by the multi-beam mask writer. So we know that there's a limit. And in that kind of a world, pixel-based and edge-based computing are mathematical deals. You know that you can do anything you can do in one, you can do in the other. Plus, it has the benefit of constant write time in exactly the same way that multi-beam mask writers write in constant time and VSP machines scale in write time based on shot count in exactly the same way in computing. Pixel-based computation is constant regardless of the shape being processed, but edge-based computation scales, takes longer, when you have more vertices and more edges. And that is pretty much the answer to this slide too, that's talking about what about the rest of the mask ecosystem? We ask the question of, well, okay, so we have mask writers, we have uh, IoT, but um, is everything else ready in a mask uh, ecostructure for curvilinear shapes? And the answer that uh, Chris Progler, the CTO of uh, Photronics, one of the uh, mask mer uh, merchant mask makers, uh, said in the latest EBM Initiative panel session 
uh, from uh, the Vakas conference and uh, said, yes, it's ready. It, it's, um, it's ready for as many curvilinear shapes as we're probably going to have um, uh, this year. And there are probably things that can be improved over time, but um, uh, it, uh, it's ready to do the number of uh, curvilinear masks that uh, we need to be able to do right now. And I think the, the predominant reason why this is the case is because if you look at mask meteorology, mask inspection, mask review, uh, mask repair, all of these things are already dealing with actual masks and pictures of them or repairing them. And actual masks are, as you know, are all curvilinear. There are no such thing as 90 degree corners on them already. Now, when they compare the uh, CAD design to uh, the actual printed mask shape, like inspection has to do, it has to account for corner rounding or uh, some other effect where um, uh, you know that what you ask for is not what you actually expect to get, right? Such approximations are required. That's the sense in which um, curvilinear uh, mask targets may improve the situation because most of the shapes that's being asked for will be manufacturable. That probably improves the situation. But still, um, there are probably comparisons and it, there might be some CAD part of it that's still uh, processing not in the pixel space, but in uh, uh, vertices uh, or uh, uh, edge-based uh, computing. And uh, when you have those kinds of situations, it's probably the case that some uh, modification would be desired for performance improvements. But functionally, yeah, in, you know, it should be fine. The problem probably lies mostly in mass data preparation and uh, uh, mask checks or, you know, those types of areas where uh, the predominant CAD algorithms almost by necessity really today are uh, driven by edges and geometries and contours. And in that space, the amount of data and the amount of computation time will scale up when you go to a fully curvilinear shape. More curvilinear it is, more uh, it's going to increase. So uh, there's definitely a, a increase there. Um, but, uh, you know, our contention is that uh, GPU acceleration is the way to solve that problem. So speaking of mask rule checking, um, uh, what the mask rules are themselves is also, we think, simpler in the curvilinear context. So uh, we think of it as rolling a ball uh, inside or outside of the contour. So if you uh, take a certain diameter of a ball and roll it uh, inside the shape, and if it clears all the way without uh, sticking out somewhere, then uh, that's good. It's MRC uh, clean, like the left side picture. Um, the middle picture uh, ran into something there, so that's why it's red. There's a problem, right? And so this is a conceptual description. It's not actually what the, uh, the CAD algorithm is doing, right? But um, uh, I think you get the idea. Um, and also, similarly, uh, you roll a ball perhaps of a different diameter uh, outside and see if it runs into something. And uh, if all of these are clear, then it's MRC clean, right? And uh, we think that something like this or uh, something augmented with just a little bit, a few simple rules can describe uh, the mask situation, whether it's legal or not, without having a very complex set of rules that's trying to, in effect, deal with non-manufacturability of the shape that's being asked for. Like if you have a corner to corner distance, then because we know that the corner is going to be corner rounded, um, we know that it can be closer than what the cat shapes uh, indicate. Uh, it, uh, those are uh, very complex rules that are situation dependent. And uh, uh, we think simpler rules like this are going to end up being better for overall manufacturing. Another thing that we studied, our co-author Johan Choi uh, did a study on a simple thing like mask bias and what does that do? What, how is that different between the rectilinear world and the curvilinear world? 
right? So the, on the top is the traditional rectilinear world. Um, and we're just taking a simple jog, Manhattan jog, and then using a curvilinear version that we would ask for in curvilinear IoT um, to uh, compare what happens if you do bias. Now, when you do uh, bias, you, you're doing a mask bias because you're anticipating um, an etching effect on masks. So you target a bigger thing to make it smaller, or you might be doing it to anticipate uh, uh, what's happening on uh, wafer uh, etching. You, you, you target a bigger shape uh, lithographically, uh, so that you can do a better job of that, and then you etch it down to make it the uh, desired size. Um, to uh, to do the bias for that is what this is mimicking on the mask shape. And what happens on the rectilinear shape, of course, is that on the corner, you have a square root of two uh, effect uh, where the corner is being uh, sticking out um, uh, more than uh, uh, the X amount that uh, you're biasing by. Um, when you do the E-beam or mask simulation of that, um, the 1.4X does translate. And um, if you plot that difference, um, basically, if you have a curvilinear mask and you bias it on the corner, asking for 10 nanometer gets you 10 nanometer. On the rectilinear one, the red one, um, you end up with a 10 nanometer desire bias, creating a 14 nanometer effect for a 40% difference. That's what the green dots represent. Now, of course, in a shape like this, it doesn't really matter because the overall shape is dominated by non-Manhattan portions. When you take the wafer simulation effect on top of that, uh, you, you do a 193i simulation, and uh, the effect of the 1.4x on the corner gets diluted over the nearby neighbors, so the corner distance is only 20% uh, bigger, right? So, but it is different. Uh, you ask for uniform bias everywhere, but you're not getting a uniform bias everywhere. The MIF is in quotes here because it's not exactly MIF. We're only looking at the particular corner, um, but uh, the the effect on that particular corner is uh, definitely more pronounced in a, a rectilinear biasing scenario as compared to the curvilinear uh, biasing scenario. Now, if you take a more complex shape and do the same relative comparison, you end up with this. And because if you did a rule-based OPC and, uh, you know, you took a corner away or you enhanced a corner on this side or whatever, um, uh, you essentially end up with many more of these 1.4x differences all over the place. And because of that, the effect can end up being accentuated on that corner. Here again, this is only on that particular corner, but still uh, it's increasing 1.66x, whereas if you do a curved linear version, it's you know pretty much x everywhere. So the difference in the uh, a wafer uh, simulation can be uh, a, quite a bit different. In this case, uh, 60%. Again, this is me in quotes. It's not 60% different everywhere. Um, it's just that on that corner, uh, it is uh, quite significantly different. Now, if you take something uh, that's a rectilinear IoT, Manhattanized IoT, and compare it to curvilinear IoT, um, the effect can be less. Um, uh, but uh, uh, if you take a contact as a target, uh, because the contact has the four corners being very close to each other, um, the effect basically for 193i, it gets uh, diluted across the entire shape. So it has the effect of biasing the circle uh, by 10%. Now, you know, if it's just a uniform bias, you can just bias that out. But I think the point is that a uh, a simple operation like mask bias can create a difference on the wafer that is much more faithfully done in the curvilinear domain as opposed to if you're operating in the rectilinear domain. So mask making gets easier. So that was talking about the nominal shape, right? The nominal shape is off 
if you are biased. This is a study uh, slide from a study that was done by Ryan Perman uh, at uh, PMJ in 2019, uh, where the variation on the wafer is studied between VSB versus multi-beam curvilinear versus Manhattan, right? So um, the difference in variation is also reduced, which is what Ezekiel was referring to. So we think um, curvilinear masks are a good thing all the way around. It's better for wafer, it's better for mask eventually, right? You know, when we all get used to it. Um, but I think one of the more exciting things about this in the future is that curvilinear masks and therefore curvilinear wafer targets also enable curvilinear designs. So why is that? It's because curvilinear ILT produces the curvilinear masks, but because of the way it works with pixels, curvilinear IoT all works with pixels, regardless of which vendor, uh, they all work with pixels. So because of that, it's resilient to the target wafer designs also being curvilinear. And that is very exciting in terms of the potential. Now I come originally from the design world so I understand very, very well how how deeply entrenched the design world is with the Manhattan assumption. Um, so uh, it is not a, a quick or easy fix mm, to enable the uh, design space uh, to become curvilinear all of a sudden. That's not going to happen overnight for sure. But the benefits are pretty substantial. Like we were saying about curvilinear designs or manufacturable designs being more reliably manufacturable. That's true on the mask, but that's true on the wafer too. So if curvilinear designs come in, that should be more manufacturable, more faithfully manufacturable and more reliably manufacturable both. So we think that that's why um, other people like, you know, iMac uh, had a poster in 2019 and they've had actually other follow-up uh, presentations too, talking about potential benefits and uh, in their case, talking about uh, uh, standard cells. And then uh, Micron uh, Ezekiel also uh, presented in the past uh, uh, non-Manhattan uh, jogs uh, being performed manually today um, in some uh, Micron design. So, um, uh, it's already starting to happen and the world starts uh, still talking about it. Um, but being generally globally available is a whole different matter. Right? Curvilinear designs will have better yield. One, because it's more reliably manufacturable, right? But two, because it will be smaller. And curvilinear designs will have less power and it will have faster clock speeds and more reliable, faster clock speeds. These are pretty substantial benefits. So we think that a uh, the manufacturing world, enabling the design world to be able to do this um, is a very, very exciting prospect. Um, curvilinear design, the difference can be like this. In the gaming world, um, Minecraft on the left, is the most popular game in the world by far, right? And they designed it explicitly to be able to work on any platform. So while it looks much better than it looks on this picture, um, if you actually had a GPU uh, on your machine and ran Minecraft, uh, it has shading and other things, and it's just much, much better uh, quality of rendering, but it's designed to be able to run on any platform, even a feeble one. Um, and then, the picture on the right is a award-winning uh, video from Death Stranding. Uh, it has a, a graphical, uh, you know, rendering. This is not a real picture, right? This is all rendered, and, you know, amazing. And the difference between left and right is the difference that our community, the mask-making community, can make 
in what semiconductor designs could look like in the future. It's exciting. All right. Thank you very much.